Let's talk about free fall. You know what free fall is. Here's a ball, I let it go, and it accelerated towards the ground, right? Well, essentially, free fall is an object moving only under the force of gravity. Now, in reality, that tennis ball, there was two forces. It was gravity pushing it down, and there was also fri friction or wind resistance pushing up. But when we calculate free fall, we're only going to use gravity. We're going to pretend that we were dropping that tennis ball in a vacuum or accelerating it in space where there's no resistance. Okay, so let's l review. Remember gravity, the force of gravity, it is a force, is 9.8 meters per second squared. It is the change in velocity over time, right? And that's what's happening as that ball moves down. It is increasing in velocity, okay? So we're going to need to use uh, gravity to solve these equations. Typically, in a physics class, you'll be asked to solve two types of equations calculating free fall. The first one is the velocity of an object at a certain point in time after it's dropped from rest. The second is the distance that it's fallen after it's been dropped. So we'll calculate those two. The first formula you need to know to calculate the velocity of an object after it's fallen is it's going to be the force of gravity times time. Okay? Let's look at an example of a question you might get. Okay? <clears throat> Free falling object dropped from rest, so we're not accelerating it down, we're just dropping it from rest. What is the instantaneous velocity? The velocity exactly at 3.0 seconds, okay, after it's been dropped, okay? Well, we're going to use this formula, and we're going to say gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared times 3 seconds, okay? And my seconds, if I have a second in the numerator and a second squared in the denominator, I can simplify that and say that is going to be removed, and I'm going to just make this meters per second. And when I calculate that out, I'm going to get my result is 29.4 meters per second. Remember to always carry those units and simplify so that you know that you have the proper units, okay? In this case, they're asking for an instantaneous velocity and that 29.4 meters per second is your instantaneous velocity. Okay, well, let's look at the second problem. Okay, well, I want to know how far did that object fall in those three seconds. So I need to use another formula for that, which is one half the force of gravity, okay, times time squared. Because remember, we're talking about a change in velocity, so that change is going to keep increasing every second. So if I plug this equation into this question, we've got at that three seconds, okay, we've got one half times the force of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, times three seconds squared. If I say three seconds squared, what does that equal? That equals three squared, which is nine, and seconds squared. So that equals nine seconds squared, okay? So I'll put nine seconds squared in there. Okay? And again, units can trip you up and units kind of get confusing, but I've got second squared in the denominator and second squared in the numerator, so I can cancel that and cancel that, and I have one half times 9.8 times 9 seconds, and that equals 44.1 meters. And that's the distance that the object has fallen in that three seconds. At that three seconds, that is the velocity. And those are the two types of equations you need to know how to solve calculating free fall.